it is here and I am super excited. This is the Zoo's double switch and it is perfect for those situations found in bathrooms where they put two switches in a single gang box. Let's get into this thing. Stay tuned. Hey, Smart Homers, John Stone, the DIY Smart Home Guy here with, well, yet another Z-Wave Plus Smart Switch. This one is the most requested, one of the most requested smart switches from the home automation community. And I know that I have been waiting for one. Zoo sent me this Zen 30 double switch and it is high time that I got it reviewed and installed. Now they did send it to me for free, but that don't mean diddly. I'm gonna tell you what I really think and no, they did not pay me to do this video. This is one of those switches that Agnes from Zoo's was talking about in our Talking Smart Homes video that was recorded at CES 2020. Two things to notice right off the bat. One is the depth comes in at just under an inch and a quarter. Check out this side by side with the Zen 21. The other thing is the built-in pigtails. The plus side of pigtails is that you don't need to monkey around with these screw-in lugs. Downside is there's more wires to shove into the box. We'll see how this holds up when we jam it into the wall box. They do supply these wire nuts and that is also a plus. The front side is also unique in that you have this baby toggle switch on top, this smaller push button on the bottom, the air gap switch, and this LED strap. And the fins are gone. Gone! Isn't that cool? Since this is a double switch, let's talk about what each one of the switches on this faceplate does and how the wiring works. We'll also go over some of the awesome parameter controls that are buried in this wee beastie. Yeah, I, I said wee beastie. What about it? The dimmer switch is rated for 250 watts with the traditional incandescent bulbs and 75 watts with LEDs. That's about nine 8 watt bulbs. When in standard operating mode, by that I mean you're not in scene mode, double tapping up on the switch will take the bulbs to full bright. You can also set a custom brightness level for on or return it to the previous brightness state, which is pretty standard with these types of dimmers. As with other dimmers, this has an adjustable ramp rate and dimming speed. The dimmer side uses a MOSFET circuit for better LED light compatibility. Those seven dots are programmable LEDs. To make that work, you're going to need the Zoo's device handler, which will let you choose from four colors and three brightness levels on the LEDs. These act as an indicator for your dim level. The fan load switch sports full 15 amp on-off control. While it's only on-off, it can be used with ceiling fans and exhaust fans. It has built-in overload protection and a dry contact relay so you should feel free to use it for more creative purposes. Since it's a standalone neutral required switch, you can use it as a virtual switch or a scene controller as well. As always, working with electrical wiring is dangerous. Make sure that you turn the power off before digging into the box. And if you are not comfortable, please call a qualified electrician. A quick overview of the wiring. The blue wire is the relay line in or also known as the dry contact line in. The black wire is the control circuit line in, also the dimmer switch line in, it's the same wire. And this is the wet contact side. Yellow is the relay load out, red is the dimmer load out, and white, of course, is neutral. If you're only using the relay aspect of this switch, you still need to have a neutral wire connected, and both the blue relay line in and black dimmer line in wires also need to be connected. The red wire should be capped for safety if you're using it in this configuration. More on this in a minute. And if for some reason you decide that you need three-way control, use method F. This can be found on the how-to section of my website, as well as video links below for both SmartThings and Hubitat. Again, there is no built-in three-way compatibility on this switch. Go to my website and look at those solutions. Go on. Go. And now it is time to shut off the power and install that switch. It's also a good time to mark the back of the switch plate with the circuit breaker ID. This is going to help you out if you ever need to go in and shut power off to that circuit for any reason. When it comes to wiring in the switch, the black wire and the blue wire are bundled together as the line in wires. The yellow wire on the switch is the other side of the dry contact relay, so it goes in my black load wire to control the heat lamp. And the red wire is the load side of the dimmer switch, so that goes to my white, wrongly used, load wire. Once all of those are hooked up, make sure that you hook up a ground wire. Then get all the wires back in the box. Take your time and situate it all in there nicely so that everything will fit back in the box. 
tack in the switch without installing the cover plate, and then restore power. Once power is back on, you should see the two LED lights light up. Then test the switch to make sure it all works. If everything works, then install that switch plate and it's time to bring it into the hub. When it comes to putting this into your hub, it's all pretty straightforward. If you're on Hubitat, the device handler is built in as long as you're on version 2.1.8 or newer of Hubitat. If you're on SmartThings, as of what I made this video, you'll need the community device handler and there is a link below. So let's bring it in. Put the hub into inclusion mode, then tap up three times on the top of that dimmer. And then you're in. If you're having trouble pairing this switch to your hub, there are a couple of troubleshooting videos in the description below. By my count, there are 22 parameters for the combined switches in the double switch. I'm not going to cover all of them, but let's look at a few that are pretty cool. First up is the LED indicator color. You can choose white, blue, green, and red, and the settings can be different between the relay and the dimmer. Next up is the relay and dimmer LED brightness. I've always liked this feature since it puts you in control of the lights that are getting really strange at night. It's kind of like a robot looking at you or something from your wall. I don't know. Another great feature of this dimmer is the min-max brightness settings. You know, those finicky lights that misbehave at lower dimming levels, you can control those. Setting both values to 99 will force the dimmer to behave like an on-off switch, which is pretty cool. If you want to use this as a scene control switch, you can put either or both the relay or dimmer into a scene mode. This is accomplished by putting the corresponding relay or dimmer load control setting to physical control disabled. Doing so enables the multi-tap function and disables load control from the switch. And you can actually disable the control from the switch and from the hub. I wouldn't do that, but you could do it. If you just set it to the physical switch, you can still control the load from your hub, phone, dashboard, or whatever. According to the manual, you can have up to 18 scenes that are activated from the switch. But according to the SmartThings driver notes, you can have 21 on SmartThings. <laughs> this is madness. It is like a scene war has erupted, which actually that's not that bad. I think that's pretty good for us as consumers. The Zoo Zen 30 double switch is both timely and relevant. It's a great switch that solves a bunch of common problems and it has enough flexibility to be applied to a wide variety of applications. Props to Zoos for creating such a great piece of hardware. However, it's not without a couple of concerns. Look, I, I get it, this is a hard problem to solve, so what I'm about to say is not really a criticism as much as it is simply information that you need to know. When you stack the wiring on the back of the switch, and it is a thin switch, this is gonna start to bulk up in that switch box, and it'll bulk up quite a bit. And there's going to be a lot going on in there, especially once you start adding in all those wire nuts. The decision to lean out that switch casing is a great decision, but at the cost of making wiring connections external, this could present a problem with some already overcrowded wiring boxes. But all in all, this is a winner. I expect to see these flying off the shelves. I hope this video helps you, and don't forget to come out and hang out in the DIY Smart Home Guide Facebook group. There is a link below for that. We're having fun. Come join us. Until next time, cheers.